I'm going to very briefly introduce John, John Geisman. Uh, but with a certain context. Um, because of the pressure of groups like this, uh, there, there was an agreement set in 2016 to shut Diablo Canyon by 2025. And uh, this is, uh, PGD wanted to basically run Diablo Canyon until it blew up the world, uh, but uh, hopefully that won't happen before 2025. So they are legally bound because of a group that John Geisman works with called the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. There were two other environmental groups, Friends of the Earth and NRDC, the union at the plant, the IBEW, the local communities, and the state joined in an agreement. Did I miss anybody? Uh, and joined in an agreement that uh, Diablo, Unit you know, 1 was shut in 24 and Unit 2 was shut in 25. However, <clears throat> because of John's research, and John is the attorney for, the, for A4NR, and their leader um, uh, uh, is Rochelle Becker, who couldn't be here tonight, but she's a fantastic, great activist and really deserves our tremendous applause and support, along with Davis Weissman, she works with. But um, uh, they, they signed this agreement but because of John's research, they have found changing circumstances. And they are now doing the incredibly brave and powerful thing of challenging the agreement they signed and demanding that PG&E shut Diablo Canyon earlier. And so John, with that, um, um, and, and nobody knows more about this issue than John. So go ahead, please. Thank you. I think I'm supposed to start this with saying, hi, I'm John and I'm a recovering attorney. <laughs> I've been involved with, with nuclear plants in California uh, since the middle 1970s. I uh, was on the steering committee of the uh, group that organized the ballot measure in 1976. I was also the executive director of the California Energy Commission uh, in the late 70s. And early 80s, uh, I was on Wall Street 20 years uh, in the bond business, uh, went back to the California Energy Commission as a commissioner. Uh, it was Gray Davis's last appointee, it served out most of my term under Arnold Schwarzenegger. Been involved as a lawyer uh, in the shutdown of San Onofre, and the shutdown of Diablo Canyon. Uh, and also involved in the licensing uh, or denial of license for every plant in California that has been proposed. Uh, I don't want to talk about nuclear power tonight. I want to talk about one plant, Diablo Canyon. And I want to address that from an extremely issue-specific standpoint. It's one that unites everybody, but with not a great deal of passion, it's dollars and cents. And since the 1970s, the one thing that has seemed to be persistently true around this issue is the way you reach people is when you explain to them that the utility company is trying to take their money and spend it on something stupid. And that is emphatically the case at Diablo Canyon. I also want to leave you with one conclusion and only one conclusion. I want to keep this as simple as possible. And that is the decision on whether or not to close this plant is going to be made in the next six months. And it's going to be made by one guy. His name is Gavin Newsom. And he is accountable to each and every one of you. And frankly, I think on energy matters, he probably thinks that he is your friend and you are his friends. You are the core of his political base on energy issues. Don't ever, ever forget that. He hasn't made a choice yet. Because of the PG&E bankruptcy, if PG&E is going to survive as a company, he's going to have to say yes. And there's some very good reasons from a dollars and cents standpoint that if, in fact, they do survive, they certainly ought not to keep running Diablo Canyon. Why do I say that? The Public Utilities Commission, which most people would tell you is significantly less than an honest broker on these issues, 
The Public Utilities Commission, in an effort in 2018 to come up with another way to step on the windpipe of community choice aggregation, developed an exit fee methodology that for the first time was going to charge community choice aggregation customers their proportionate share for Diablo Canyon. Never been done before. It was intended to be something of a poison pill for the organizations of these CCAs, and frankly, they're taking business away from every investor-owned utility in California, none more so than PG&E. This methodology, though, provided a roadmap on how to calculate above market costs. The theory was that the CCAs ought to pay their proportionate share of above market costs. And if Diablo Canyon was going to be included in the methodology for the first time, you were going to be able to find out what the above market costs are at Diablo Canyon. Now, don't take my word for it. I've watched this issue be litigated for 40 years. And one economist gets up and says it's X, Y, Z. Another economist gets up and says it's A, B, C. The experts battle with each other. And someone like the Public Utilities Commission tries to sort it out and make a decision. And we all know which way the wind blows when it comes to that type of regulatory decision making. But now, for the first time, Public Utilities Commission has an official methodology for how to calculate above market costs at Diablo Canyon. Now, I didn't try and calculate these numbers myself. Like I said, I'm a recovering attorney. I asked PG&E, well, how do you calculate it? And of course, they wouldn't answer directly, so you have to ask, 30 questions to get the right answers, and you add answer 11 to answer 14 to answer 23, and it turns out that in 2018, Diablo Canyon cost PG&E $410 million in above market costs. $410 million, that is a lot of money to most people. It's a calculation that you, pg e have a choice. You can buy 2,200 megawatts from the market, and the methodology establishes, well, how do you value that price? What value do you put on carbon offsets? What value do you put on resource adequacy, reliability? Or you can recover the costs that you've recorded at Diablo Canyon. In 2018, that delta was $410 million. In 2019, it jumped up to $1,168 million. In 2020, PG&E estimates it is $1,258,000,000. Dollars. This is not really trending in the right direction from anybody's standpoint. And if it continues at the 2020 rate, by the time the plant closes, it will have accumulated a little more than $8 billion in above market costs. Now, the other dynamic that is going on is because of CCOs, PG&E is losing customers hand over fist. In 2017, PG&E had an 82% market share within its service territory. In 2020, that's 43%, almost half. Almost half. Now, back when we developed the agreement to retire the plant when the licenses expire, pg e did an analysis, and fortunately they made it public. They said, you know, 
we don't know how many customers we're going to have in 2025. And the best estimate we can make is our market share is going to be down to 55% in 2025. And if it goes as low as 44%, that's our worst case scenario, but if it goes as low as 44%, only 26% of the output of Diablo Canyon is needed. Well, it's at 43%. It's not 2025, it's 2020. The future is now, and about three quarters of the planet's output cannot be justified. So what you've got is a plant generating more than one and a quarter billion dollars of above market costs, being subsidized to that extent by its customers and the CCOs through exit fees, and it can only justify about a quarter of its output. This makes no sense. But then again, you've got a company that is in its second bankruptcy in the 21st century. They call that chapter 22 down at the bankruptcy court. Many people are fearful that we're headed to chapter 33 if they don't clean up their act. They happen to be the only convicted felon in the United States that the federal government allows to operate a nuclear power plant. Now, you folks that live in San Luis Obispo, how do you feel about that? I don't care how much money they may pay the local community to be friendly. Having a convicted felon accused of and convicted of six safety-related violations at uh, San Bruno in their gas system, one of which was obstructing a federal investigation, that's not your ideal profile to continue operating this plant. There's not a single circumstance that can be identified that justifies keeping this plant going any longer. And in the bankruptcy process, there is one guy that has a decision to make, whether the plant continues or not, whether PG&E gets its bankruptcy plan confirmed or not. That's the governor of the state of California, a very ambitious fellow, a very friendly fellow, a very simpatico fellow. And my advice to you, you want an action, yeah. figure out some way to get to Gavin and do it pretty quick because the decision's gonna be made in the next several months and I know with the help of people like Harvey, you'll be able to figure out how to get to it. Thanks very much. Um, uh, uh, Cynthia, and uh, thank you so much. It was great, Jessica. Stay here, please. Um, uh, and Linda and I uh, have been out there since the 1960s actually, and John almost as long. So we are at the point, John has said that we, in the next six months, the decision will be made on Diablo Canyon. And that's partly because the uh, bankruptcy is, is scheduled to wind down by the summer. PG&E is in bankruptcy. Exactly who you want running a nuclear power plant. They're also a convicted felon, as John has mentioned. They killed eight people in San Bruno for no, absolutely no reason in 2010 because they did not maintain their gas pipes. It's not rocket science to maintain a gas pipe. These people didn't do it. They forced gas through in an absolutely insane act of irresponsibility, blew up, blew up 19 houses, and we know what it's like when houses burn down here in Oakland. They blew up 19 houses and killed eight people in 2010. And this is who's running the Apple Canyon. And then they burned down half of Northern California and killed 80 people and wiped out paradise, uh, among other things. This is who's running Diablo Canyon. These guys are in bankruptcy, these men and women. The last president was a woman, actually, and they gave her a, what, $3 million parachute as she was walking out the door. And now uh, we have uh, um, 
Gavin Newsom, the governor, saying all sorts of things. I mean, I couldn't say worse things about Diablo Canyon except slightly different language, but nonetheless, um, he is saying that they don't exist and that they are incompetent and pretty much anything a governor could say bad about a utility, he is saying. Now, the big question in people's minds is should the state take over, Diablo, take over uh, P pg and &E, uh, or let pg and &E continue to operate? The interim, the, the middle ground is the state take it over and break it up. And they all, you know, San Francisco has already tried to buy PG&E's assets in San Francisco. I think that would be a good idea. I am, uh, as a student of the history of the utility industry, the municipal utilities have actually done very, very well. My scenario would be to break up pg and &E, have the state take it over, break it up, and have the municipalities run PG&E. And there's a ton of media on this, and none of the media mentions Diablo Canyon. It's astounding. Both the Washington Post and the New York Times and the LA Times have run front page pieces about PG&E and what is Gavin going to do, because Gavin, of course, is a down-the-road presidential prospect. Uh, I will tell you, in the 20th century, every time in an election, the taller candidate won. And he's what, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, so he already has an inroad. But the bottom line here is that they will not touch Diablo Canyon. Diablo Canyon, we don't know what Diablo Canyon is worth. How do you go through a bankruptcy and not have an ability to assess the dollar value of the company's biggest asset? Nobody has a dollar value for, for Diablo Canyon. It's absolutely insane. And all this dialogue about this bankruptcy is proceeding without mention of Diablo Canyon. We have that, we circ circulate a petition in Southern California. And I gotta say, this has to be done in Northern California, and a group has to get behind this. We circulate a petition only asking the governor to inspect the plant because we know it's embrittled, we, we suspect it's cracked, well, their deferred maintenance list is out the door, you know, that, that really should be, P, on the pg e logo, it says, we defer maintenance. I mean, that's what they do, they don't do it. You know, uh, they, they can't handle their nuclear waste, as Linda has shown, uh, they, they, uh, they are completely incompetent. They had an inspector general, a, a resident inspector, named Michael Peck, at the Abu Canyon, working for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who did a report after being there five years saying, I don't think these reactors can withstand a credible earthquake. You know what they did? They, f they moved him to Tennessee, and now he's no longer with Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And they said, well, that's a, a differing professional opinion. It's ridiculous. So we've had all this. We've asked the governor to inspect the reactors. He will not do it. He had, we had him down, that Diablo 1 was shut for refueling and they would not, which was the perfect time to, to go in and inspect, which costs a very small amount of money. It does not cost, you know, a, a whole lot of money. We could actually do a bake sale and pay for them to inspect uh, Diablo Canyon and they wouldn't do it. Now, Diablo Unit 1 is scheduled to shut again in the fall for refueling. That is our goal date. We want Diablo Canyon to shut for refueling, which it must do, and not reopen. But we have to get Diablo into the dialogue. Now, when John has talked about over market prices, that means that they cannot compete in the market. They can't keep, compete with gas. They can't compete with wind, and we can't, can't compete with solar. New solar and new wind are cheaper than continuing to operate Diablo Canyon. So the, the reality is that um, the public is subsidizing the continued operation of the Diablo Canyon nuclear plants to the tune of, of 400 million, then 1.1 billion, then 1.2 billion and on up. And as John has said, to keep Diablo Canyon open until 2025, which is the deal, we will be taxing California ratepayers $7 billion over market. All these corporations tell us how wonderful the free market is, but when they're confronted with the free market, they go directly to the public to get bailouts. And that's what's happening at Diablo Canyon. And then they come up, as John has said, more than half of the, the customers in PG&E service territory has gone, have fled to CCAs, and they come up with a tax. This is capitalism uh, on LSD. This is capitalism where they say that we have a free market, you're buying electricity from us, okay, you want to buy electricity from somewhere else, you're going to pay us even after you've left us. 
It's like you buy clothes at Walmart one week, and then the next week you go to Target, but Walmart charges you a, a tax on what you're buying at Target. It's exactly what's going on here. It's, it's, it's beyond anything that makes any sense, except for the, the, the corrupt payments of, of PG&E. Now, we have to get this into the dialogue. Because once Diablo Canyon is starting to be uh, uh, discussed in these terms, nobody's going to go for this stuff. This is ridiculous. That plant cannot compete with wind, solar, or gas. Even, and, and um, uh, something like, was it 1,700 megawatts of solar and wind were installed in California last, last year? Last year. Last year alone. Diablo is around 2,200 megawatts at the, you know, rated. Last year alone in California, 1,700 megawatts of new solar and wind were installed. And it's, and it's accelerating. Now, one thing that happens with Diablo, and you gotta understand this, because it's a base, base, um, baseline plant, uh, base load plant, you know, they, all these guys, these crazy people, and there's one of them in Berkeley, whose name I will not mention, um, uh, are promoting nuclear power, and they say that it's, you have to have it because it's baseload, because it provides electricity 100% of the time when it's operating. But the, the but demand fluctuates. Demand goes up and down. And, and so you've got this baseload here, and demand's down here, and then it's up there and down here, but they're still putting out juice. And the reality is that a lot of the time, Diablo forces wind and solar plants to shut down while they're operating because there's too much juice on the grid because they can't, they can't go up and down. It's insane. And the, and the wind and solar are cheaper, cleaner, safer, more reliable, and create more jobs. So these reactors make absolutely no financial sense whatsoever. The problem we place, and you, the reality is here, the, IEB, the IBEW, and I'm a union man, and most of the people support unions here, but the IBEW has 1,000 people working at Diablo, or thereabouts, and they don't want to lose these jobs. And so they will do anything to keep Diablo open, right to the last minute that the thing blows up and wipes out and sends a radioactive cloud to destroy California. They will be prevent, pre, pre, uh, protecting those jobs. And so, as John has pointed out, if you're, making a, if you're losing a billion one a year, you can pay these guys and women off and, and have them stay and decommission the plant, and we'll still come out ahead financially. So uh, the numbers are on our side. The great miracle of our time with the no nukes movement is that when we started at uh, Seabrook, which Joanna mentioned, and uh, those were the first big demos, and then here, um, we were asked, well, what is going to replace nuclear power? And we'd say, uh, our solar or wind. We had absolutely no idea what we were talking about. You know, they were like just tiny little industries. They are now the biggest industries in the world. Four, solar, solar wind, batteries, and increased efficiency LED, which should be in here, by the way. But you know, uh, these four in these four technologies are completely revamping the world in terms of energy and in terms of their economies. This is what Trump is. Trump is the last gasp of King Kong: coal, oil, and nukes and gas. And we in t California have the technology, and we sh we are embarrassed by this. You know, and Diablo Canyon is the number one concentrated heat emitter on the West Coast. No other facility ex uh, uh, um, uh, throws out, spews out as much waste heat as Diablo Canyon. And no other facility loses as much money per square foot as Diablo Canyon. So these are the levers that we have. We've got to circulate, recirculate, come to my solartopia.org website and look at the petition to get the, the, the thing inspected. But at the same time, now, and John knows how to do this, we have, got, we have got to get the assembly and we've got to get the media to pay attention to the gargantuan amounts of money that are being lost at the Abel Canyon. And the, the CCA here in Oakland, the, uh, the, you know, pg and is going out of the CCAs and saying, in lieu of your exit fee, which shouldn't exist at all, why should you have to pay an exit fee to go to another a supplier? And, but in, instead of that, we'll give you uh, nuclear power uh, generated electricity. Absolutely insane. So that's where we're at. And uh, that's why we're saying, within six months, well, we can shut these reactors. Because if, if, if we can... 
Diablo Unit 1 will shut in the fall. They have to shut for about six weeks to refuel. We want to prevent them from reopening. That's the target. And if we take down Unit 1, Unit 2 will also go down because it makes no sense to operate just one of them. <laughs>